I would like to talk about the connection between information literacy and democracy, as well as why information literacy skills become more crucial in the post-truth era. It is now said that we live in a post-truth era, which is defined as an adjective relating to circumstances in which objective facts are less influential in shaping public opinion than emotions and personal belief. The post prefix here implies an atmosphere in which a notion is irrelevant. In post truth era, people's information consumption is being increasingly guided by their emotions. The use of term post truth has spiked in 2016 and it was announced as word of the year by the Oxford Dictionaries. Since then, the term post-truth became increasingly prevalent in public discourse. The reason for the sudden spike in the usage of the term was politics. It was due to the huge number of false news stories generated during the Brexit referendum in the United Kingdom and the presidential election in the United States in 2016. The term garnered widespread popularity in the form of post-truth politics and started to appear with far more frequency in news articles and on social media. During the Brexit referendum on European Union membership, the Brexit supporting press provided negative stories about EU, such as up to 5 million more EU migrants from the new member states could come to Britain by 2030, and leaving EU would provide extra millions of pounds to spend for the national health system. <clears throat> Similarly, presidential election in the United States marked by lots of misinformation and false news. Acquisitions of lies flowed freely throughout the campaign. Hundreds of fact checks were published about statements from both Clinton's and Trump's sites. What exactly happens during, during political campaigns? Number of information items increases about political issues and potentially life altering societal problems. People receive information in an intense period of time Information they receive is often neither comprehensive nor reliable. The topics are complex and associated with a wide, wide range of opinions and viewpoints. While number of information items to deal with increases, the amount of available time to make decisions decreases. As a result, people resort to simpler and less reliable rules for making choices and decisions. <clears throat> Research in political psychology indicates that emotions play a role in shaping mass political behavior. Feelings about candidates and issues are strong predictors of preferences. People as voters more likely remember information that generates an effective reaction. Voting is based on what voters remember and that recall of, mem recall of memory is highly biased. Politicians today, well aware of this and increasingly appeal to the emotions of citizens rather than reason. The rise of post-truth politics coincides with polarized political beliefs. Post-truth thrives in a polarized environment where the idea of truth is already split into notions of my truth versus your truth. The internet and social media present a new platform for group polarization, while fake news reinforces existing ones. Group polarization is an important phenomena in social psychology and is observable in many social contexts uh, for instance, vaccination is a good example for that, and feminism, climate, climate change, animal rights, abortion, even football, and no need to mention politics. In this post-truth era, where emotions are more influential on information consumption, fake news has become inescapable. It is hard to combat and interrupt the production and dissemination of fake news. 
The term fake news is not new. It has recently become a buzzword, though. It means manipulated news that are intentionally and verifiably false and disseminated to mislead and misinform. It goes viral with astonishing speed and generally without being verified or confirmed. Even if it is eventually corrected or disproved, the damage has already been done and it continues to flood around and remains digitally archived for future discovery. A research was conducted to find out how online news spread by MIT scholars in 2018. Researchers investigated the differential diffusion of true and false news stories distributed between 2006 and 2017 on Twitter. An article is published based on this research in Science, which is a highly respected journal. Let's, uh, findings indicated that falsehoods spreaded six times faster than truth. Falsehoods were 70% more likely to be retweeted than the truth. According to the researchers, it was because the false news was more novel than the true news, which suggests that people were more likely to share novel information. Infodemic is another term which is widely used in the days of COVID-19 pandemic. It means an excessive amount of information concerning a problem such that the solution is made more difficult. In February 2020, the term was used by the World Health Organization to refer to mostly false information about the COVID-19 outbreak. When we talk about the terminology, it would be good to make the distinction between misinformation and disinformation. Misinformation refers to the in inadvertent sharing of false information. It is incomplete, uncertain, vague, or ambiguous information. On the other hand, disinformation refers to the deliberate creation and sharing of information known to be false. It is created with malicious or ill intent. No matter in what form and under which name it comes, it could be urban myths, hoaxes, conspiracy theories, new satire, alternative facts. Pro proliferation of ambiguous information today is at alarming rate. Motivation behind the production and dissemination of fake news vary. It could be financial. People promote particular products uh, and or services while discrediting others or providing internet traffic with clicks that are comfortable to advertising revenue. It could be ideological. Sometimes fake news are used for shaping public opinion or influencing, influencing uh, public actions. It is used for propaganda, persuasion, destruction, or provocation. People share fake news because of a need for attention, so the motivation could be psychological, or it could be just for entertainment, like in news satire and news parody. Fake news or disinformation, misinformation have found a new channel. Today, how news is distributed changed. Social media facilitates speedy exchange, exchange and spread of information, fake or otherwise, to a mass audience. As the findings of a multinational comparative research, which is carried out in 2018, indicates, online platforms, particularly social media, are becoming the main sources of news for a growing number of individuals. There are also other developments. Non-journalists began to engage in journalistic activities. Citizen journalists can post information, photos, videos, and narratives about newsworthy events they witness firsthand through their blogs or, or through their social media accounts. They can reach a mass audience. While there is a rise of citizen journalism, there is no code of ethics on sharing manipulated content on social media, unlike legacy news media. There are more to manipulate. Uh, additional to text, there are photos and videos, and there are difficulties in verification of information in these different formats. 
Hidden paid posters are the people who get paid for posting comments or articles on different online communities and websites for hidden purposes, such as influencing the opinion of other people towards certain social events or business markets. They can create a significant either negative or positive effect on the online communities. The information they post is usually not trustworthy. Internet Voter Army is one example. It is born in China and people who belong to this group make postings on some online platforms to change public opinion about products and companies. 50 Cent Army is another example. These are internet commentators which are hired by Chinese authorities to manipulate public opinion to the benefit of the Chinese Communist Party. Information is an essential and ubiquitous element of everyday life and is important for a functioning democracy. Individuals need access to quality information to support and inform their activities from participation in democratic, democratic, democratic sorry, elections and ballot initiatives to making decisions that will keep them safe and healthy. Factual information is the currency of a democracy. In a democracy, the power is with the people, and that power comes from information. However, in order information to be of use, it has to be accurate, factual, and unbiased. There are a variety of ways to manipulate information in order to distort the message. One obvious way to distort information is to only present one side of the story and suppress or ignore information to the contrary. When people lack factual information, when they are uninformed or misinformed, they still make judgments or decisions and form opinions based on what they know or what they believe. In some cases, people ignore misinformation or the fake news stories they come across. However, in some cases, the consumption of fake news leads to concrete actions and can lead to serious consequences, such as affecting election results, harming individuals, nations, or businesses, or causing panic. A classic example of Widespread misinformation dates back to 1938, when the broadcast of a radio drama, The War of the Worlds, frightened an estimated 1 million residents in the United States. The drama directed by Orson Welles was in the form of a live news report, and listeners interpreted Martian invasion as factual news. That caused almost a nationwide panic. Pizzagate is just one of the numerous fake news stories that flood social media. Again, in 2016, a man carrying a rifle walked into a pizza restaurant in Washington, D.C. to self-investigate whether the restaurant was the headquarters of an underground child abuse ring run by then presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. He fired several shots into the ceiling of the restaurant. Luckily, no one was injured. Similarly, many people supported the Iraq wars based on misinformation and claims about the connections between Iraq and Al-Qaeda and the presences of weapons of mass destruction. At the ministerial level, Pakistan's defense minister tweeted on December 2016 a menacing response to a false report that Israel had threatened Pakistan with nuclear weapons. Thus, fake news can have real and very, very serious consequences. Fact checking platforms help fighting against fake news. They provide evaluation of verifiable claims made in public statements through investigation of primary and secondary sources. An, incre an increasing amount of fact-checking or numbers of fact-checking outlets exist across, across different countries. 
However, the trustworthiness of fact-checking services or platforms should also be questioned. Their origin, uh, ownership, uh, which may affect impartiality, and transparency of the fact-checking procedure should be checked. There are also some shortcomings to address, such as the increasing amount of statements or and information needed to be assessed and manually performed procedures, which are very time consuming and require uh, expertise. As mentioned earlier, in post-truth era, people's information consumption is being in increasingly guided by their emotions. Information behavior uh, patterns are complex, multifaceted, and dynamic. They are affected by numerous factors, such as cognitive, biological, psychological, political, or sociocultural. In the post threat era, consumers deliberately pass over objective facts in favor of information that confirms their existing beliefs because they are emotionally invested in their current mental schemas or are emotionally attached to the people or organizations which the new information port portrays. Filter bubbles are the result of the careful creation of the information related to the user, such as former click behavior, uh, search history, location, social media feeds. On one hand, they enable users to be surrounded by like-minded people and information that is aligned with their existing beliefs. On the other hand, they can cause users to get significantly less contact with contradicting viewpoints create a kind of intellectual isolation and a misleading image of reality. Personalization, or in other words, filtering, helps uh, fighting against information chaos and information over overload. It helps us to get relevant and useful information and information of interest, uh, while uh, helping us to avoid the rest uh, irrelevant, not useful, or somehow irritating information. In self-selected personalization or filtering, people actively choose what to see. In pre-selected personalization, on the other hand, algorithms personalize content for users, and here there are some serious concerns. Algorithms are also censorship mechanisms. They do not base on ethical principles, and they hinder access to content, Awareness that there are other opinions and views. Awareness of the existence of some issues and problems. Moreover, they are invisible. And users generally don't know that information they get is personalized or filtered. They may assume it is complete and neutral. They are created uh, without users' consent and contribute to creation of echo chambers. In news media, echo chamber is a metaphorical description of a situation in which beliefs are amplified or reinforced by communication and repetition inside a closed system. Echo chambers increase political and social polarization and extremism. It is easy for anyone to become overwhelmed and overloaded by the sheer volume of information presented to us on any given day over the internet and other forms of communication. Social media plays a significant role in information overload because it facilitates the creation of massive amount of information. This slide shows what happens in one minute in the internet, and these are the figures for this year. Uh, 2020. With this short overview, we can now say that information consumers today need to be competent, knowledgeable, sharp, tireless, active, and intelligent users, of course, as well as creators of information. They should be able, they should be able and prepared to critic the news and information being broadcast and published should be able to seek and find the information that is not being broadcast or otherwise prioritized. 
they should be able to describe and understand the difference between the various providers and provocators of information, which means they need to be information literate. And information literacy is needed today more than ever. Attempts should be made to adapt information literacy instruction, in other words, to extend it according to the requirements of the post root age. Information literacy instruction must address issues not only about finding and evaluating the credibility of information sources, but also about sifting fact from falsehood, bursting filter bubbles and reaching beyond echo chambers, recognizing weak arguments and common traps in arguments, understanding of search engine rankings and how algorithms uh, work, developing fact-checking uh, abilities, and also getting familiar with fact-checking platforms and services and recognizing their limitations. Democracy is a system of government by the whole population. It is a government in which the supreme power is vested in the people and exercised by them directly or indirectly through a system of representation. In order democracies to function properly, people need accurate, factual, and unbiased information so, so that they can make informed decisions with their free will. In a post truth era where ambiguous information proliferates and manipulation through misinformation becomes widespread, it is crucial that every and each member of society is equipped with information literacy skills. Well, these are some references I have used if uh, somebody or anybody interested and a bit more here. And thank you very much for listening.